Hey everybody, welcome to this uh, live here on LinkedIn. And this week we've been talking about inspiration and inspiring leaders. And uh, if you don't know me, my name is James Robbins and I've spent the last 20 plus years training leaders, working with leaders and leading organizations myself. So it's certainly a passion of mine to talk about this. But this week it's all about inspiration. And you might have saw a post I put on LinkedIn, I think yesterday, where one study found that 72% of leaders think they're inspiring and only 27 of their staff agreed with that sentiment. So, you know, why the gap? And also, is inspiration even that important? Like, what if you're not an inspirational person? Can you still lead? And is inspiration just something that you're born with? And there's certainly a, a, an element of charisma to that. And maybe you're not that, or maybe you can't give speeches in public. Does that mean you can't be inspiring? So this is what we're going to unpack all on this live as we talk about what it means to be not only an inspiration leader, inspiration leader, but I'm going to show you three ways how you can increase your inspiration quotient literally today. Okay. So we're going to jump on in and this is one of my favorite topics to talk about, but let me just go to some slides here. And so first of all, you know, when it comes to inspiration, and by the way, um, if you look at some of the research, I think about uh, what uh, Jim Coots and Larry Posner did through the Leadership Challenge, and they found that one of the things that people most want in their leader is they want their leader to be inspiring. Now, again, how do we define inspiring? Because what is inspiring to you might not be inspiring to me, right? Inspiration can be a, a very personal thing. Or is it? As you're going to see today, inspiration, while it's expressed in different ways, actually comes from a few core principles. And once you understand those, then you're going to be able to better inspire your staff. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump in. And basically there, honestly, there's not a lot of like clinical research that's been done on the principle of inspiration. Of course, motivation has been studied, you know, to death, but inspiration is a little bit different. But two of the guys who are probably the forerunners in this are uh, uh, Thrash and Elliot. And what they, what they, this is kind of a model that they came up with. I don't know if you call it a model, but basically what they're saying is that when it comes to inspiration, there's some sort of catalyst that happens, which causes a reaction, which then leads to action. Now, this is, you know, definitely a simple way to look at it. And you can think of this. Let's say you go to, let's say you go to a Tony Robbins event. And while you're there, you know, you're surrounded by all these people that are super excited and, and everybody's jumping up and down and there's lights and lasers and there's a message. And basically that's the catalyst, but it causes a reaction. It creates this, this energy inside of you. And then you leave there and you, you go full, full tilt right into living your best life or launching your business or reaching your goals or, or whatever that may be. Uh, or you go watch a movie. Maybe you watch a movie of, I don't know, somebody, especially if you relate with a character, maybe it's somebody who, uh, maybe they were uh, down and out and, uh, or out of shape and then they decided that they were going to get in shape or you watch Rocky to date some of us, right? You watch Rocky and you come out of Rocky and then all of a sudden you're, you're doing push-ups before you go to bed and you're going you're gonna to sign up for a gym membership the next day. Why? Because there was a catalyst, there was a reaction and it led to action. In other words, that's inspiration. And I'm not going into too deep today about the motivation part, but if you look at motivation, like motivation exists on a scale, right? From way over here to extrinsic, external, highly controlled motivation to all the way on the other side of the, the spectrum, internal, intrinsic uh, motivation, where our productivity increases, our engagement increases, uh, we, we enter into those flow states a lot of times inspiration bumps us in to that intrinsic place of motivation. That's why you want to learn how to be inspiring as a boss. All right, so let's jump in here. I'm going to talk about three things here uh, today, but basically here's the thing. Inspiration comes down really to just to me, this one word, which then leads to an emotion. And this is like the foundational pieces of, of inspiration but it's all about possibility. When you think of any time that you've been inspired, it's because someone or something opened your eyes to something 
to something greater than your current reality. And it opened up a gap that you felt motivated to close. In other words, you began to see what was possible. Let's go to, um, let's take the, the football team that's losing at halftime. And the coach uh, gets in and he's talking to the team and the team is down and they're dejected and they can't believe what's happened to them and they're down by four touchdowns and they don't think it's even possible to, to come back. Well, the coach's job in that moment is to restore a belief in what's possible. Now, he or she might do various different things to do that. Maybe they're going to talk about things they did in the past or stories that they know about or whatever it is. But if those players are going to be inspired, they have to be reminded or eyes opened up again to the possibility that we can do this. And this is where inspiration comes from. When people open their eyes and they think, ah, what is possible? And so this really dovetails into the first thing I want to talk about when as a leader is, you know, what do you see? Because some of the most inspiring leaders that you have ever worked for. And I've asked this question in, in my workshops that I've done like hundreds, hundreds of times. And people talk about, you know, who is inspiring to them. And an inspirational leader is someone who is just always thinking, what's possible? Like, what could we potentially do here? But what happens to us in leadership is we, we're so busy, right? We're, we're stuck in the weeds. We're putting out fires. We're solving problems. We're, you know, mitigating some kind of risk where we're helping two of our staff members who are arguing with each other, you know, make up. We're like, we're doing all these tasks and that we get away from being visionary. Being visionary isn't something that you're just naturally born with. It comes from taking some time to think and asking the question, what's possible? What do I see? What do I see with my team? What do I see as their strengths? What do I see as my strengths? What do I see we could do together? What do I see? That's where it begins. And because again, when we start asking that question more, like, what do I see? It, it opens the door for possibility to enter the room and possibility. That's the seeds, right? That's the catalyst. That's that spark for inspiration. And so that possibility could be about future plans, things that you guys want to accomplish in your team in your company, in your personal life, for you personally, your kids. Uh, but also, possibility can be about someone's potential. Have you ever been, uh, have you ever had a time in your life where maybe things weren't going great, maybe you, your career wasn't going well, or maybe you're running your business and you're struggling to do that. And when we get to this place, we start to, what happens? We start to doubt. And when we start to doubt, we start to doubt typically in ourselves first. And then we start to think, I don't know if I can do this. And doubt is just such a, a deadly emotion because doubt is a killer of action. Doubt is a restrictive uh, emotion. It's regressive. It makes people want to play it safe. They don't want to fail. But when we're in a place of doubt, uh, we, we stop seeing our potential. And then someone comes along and either reminds us or maybe they, they kick us in the butt with some tough love, but it's often about you're capable of more than this. And when we get that message, then all of a sudden we, we wake up to our potential again. It's like we forgot it for a moment. And in that moment, we get inspired. And all of this, all of this leads to an emotion, uh, hope. And I, I think, this is my personal opinion, I think hope is the most powerful emotion that there is. Now, I used to think love was the most powerful, and that could be, you know, some of my religious uh, upbringing that, that had me thinking that way. But I think hope is actually more powerful. Let me tell you why. Because you can, you can be, let's say you're not loved. Let's say no one loves you on the planet Earth. That's depressing, right? Let's say nobody loves you. By the way, if you're thinking that people love you, they do. But let's say you, let's say nobody loves you. And, uh, but at least you have the hope that someone will. That hope gives you strength. 
versus there are people who are loved all around them and they know they're loved, but they've lost hope and they've lost hope in life. And that can be a really dangerous place. And, um, you know, we probably all know someone or know someone who knows someone who maybe lost a person to a place where they felt like they didn't have hope anymore. And this is why I think hope is one of the, I think hope is the most powerful emotion. Uh, and how do we bring this into the workplace? By being inspirational leaders. In fact, it was Napoleon. He said, leaders are dealers in hope, right? I mean, this is hundreds of years ago. Leaders are dealers in hope, and it's true. So let me get to, let me get to uh, just a couple practical things that you can do to increase your leader, your inspiration quotient. And the first one is this. As for you as a leader, whether you run a company, whether you're CEO, whether you're a mid-level manager, whether you're an HR, uh, or maybe you're not even leading anyone right now, but you have a family. Number one, consistently get people to ask the question, what's possible? Get them to ask the question, what's possible? So I remember a story about a, a guy at a, a church. He was on staff at a big church and they were having a staff meeting and the, the senior leader, the senior pastor was leading the meeting and he threw out a question to his staff and he said, if you guys weren't working in the church, what do you think you'd have been doing with your life? And so one by one, they're all beginning to share. Well, one of the guys, he shares, well, I always wanted to make movies, but you know, obviously that's not really possible now. And the leader picked up on that and he said, well, why not? Why isn't that possible? Let's talk about this. And in that moment, they pivoted and they had this brainstorm about what's possible. And because they had that conversation about what's possible, this church ends up making a movie that does really well. Then they made another movie and they made another movie. And, you know, I don't know how many millions of dollars they've made because of it. Uh, and, you know, touched a lot of lives because of the message that they send, but all because a leader got people to ask the question, what's possible? And so find different ways to, to bring that into your staff meetings or to bring that even individually with people, because that question shifts people from this problem focused thinking into uh, a more up, up, uh, like I want to say opportunistic, but like about opportunity and optimism and things like that. So that's number one, get consistently get people to, to ask the question, what's possible. Of course you can ask that question. Number two, it's to help people see their potential. <clears throat> so if you've been following my work for any amount of time, or maybe you've gone through nine minutes on Monday, our leadership program, you'll know a big thing we talk about is recognition, but not just recognition for the sake of like, Oh, I want to make someone feel good. So let me recognize them. That's good, but to be more strategic with it, right? Recognition is how we, it's how we reinforce culture, reinforce behavior. But it's also a place where we remind people of their potential. So let's say we're on a team together and you've just done something amazing and I know it was a struggle for you to get there. I'm going to recognize you for that. And I'm going to remind you of the strengths you had that pulled that off. So that would just be one example of, how, of helping people see their potential. Another way is when you are giving a project to somebody and you basically go and tell them why they're going to be successful. Hey, I know this is a big ask. I know this is a project you've never done before, but here's why I know that you're going to be able to pull this off because X, Y, Z, and you're pointing to their past, you're pointing to their strengths, you're pointing to their potential. You're reminding them of that. Because when they step back into that belief, like, oh yeah, this is possible. It kicks off a whole bunch of other psychological processes, right? And when I was, uh, when I've been doing this, this survey, talking to managers about, you know, who inspired you and, and what was it they, they did? A consistent answer, people would say, they believed in me. They just believed in me. I want you to think back in your past right now to a boss that you had that you didn't feel believed in you, or maybe a coach, right? You, you made a team or, or you just made the team. Like I, I did that several times. Like I just made the team like last spot. 
And a big part of you is you wonder, like, should I be here? And, you know, and if the coach believes in you or doesn't believe in you, it makes a massive difference. The same with leadership. When you have a leader that doesn't believe in you or, or you feel that, it's not inspiring. But when you've got a leader that does, it, it's so strengthening and it gives you hope because you trust that they must see something even if you don't see it. And so this, this is one of those things that we want all of our staff to be able to say this. And so that's a question for you. Do all your staff feel this right now? And think through them. Because if, if they don't, I mean, it's hard, to, it's hard to know, right? You can't guess on this one. It's like 72% of leaders think they're inspirational and 27% of their staff don't think so. But we, this is one of those things where we consistently tell people in creative ways that we believe in them because absolutely that's important. And then lastly is to model values that are difficult but desirable. So there's a certain set of values that are just universal. Certain set of values that are universal, they can be things like uh, integrity, honesty, uh, maybe even kindness or respect, certainly courage. And, you know, who doesn't want to be these things? But there are times when we're tested to, be, to, to, to compromise tested to, to, to compromise kindness. We're tested to compromise integrity for the sake of a result or not getting trouble from the boss above us. Or we're, we're tested to compromise uh, honesty, you know, when the pressure's on and, and we're being squeezed. And in those moments, those values, it takes a lot of courage to live out your values. But in fact, it's that courage that's inspiring to people because not everybody has that strength. Like not everybody has that strength to, to stand up to, uh, to peers, to stand up to their boss, or to stand up to um, things that are outside their value system. They want to, but they don't always have those strengths. I mean, we, we can all look probably at times in our past where we, we violated our own values to, to fit in, right? And so when a leader doesn't compromise, and they stick to their values, and they're consistent about that, we find inspiration in that. And the reason why is because the leader is a model for us. And so we think subconsciously, if they can do it, I can do it. It's like we're borrowing courage from them. And when we do that, that's inspiring. And that's why if you look back over any inspirational boss you've ever had, I bet they modeled values. And in that, you found strength. You found a catalyst to create a reaction to inspire action. So that's how it all works. Listen, I'm going to end up this, this live here, but uh, remember this. Inspiration is something that people want in, in their leaders. And inspiration is not just something that you're born with, I certainly wasn't born with inspiration, right? I was like this shy, redheaded kid who grew up on a farm. I was scared to go up in front of the class to do show and tell. Nothing inspirational about me. But when you learn the principles of inspiration, that it's all about opening people's eyes to possibility, then you can begin to do the little things that do that. Right, so that's what we've been talking about today. Hey, listen, if you want more leadership tools, tips, hacks, tactics, you know, I hate to call it hacks, but uh, then go go visit our website, jamesrobbins.com, sign up to Leadership Tools, and every week we send something out. Uh, and uh, if we're not connected on LinkedIn, hey, let's make sure we are. But until then, hey, good luck. Uh, go out there and be an inspirational leader because the world needs more of them.